Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Bud Light. Bud Light is going to panic layoffs to try to correct some of their finances. Next week, they need to announce their second quarter results. Their results are going to be damaged by the entire Dylan Mulvaney promotion. The Dylan Mulvaney promotion has caused at least a 30 to 31% nationwide drop in Bud Light sales, but not just Bud Light. It's affected all of the Anheuser-Busch brands. They all have been reduced because people are so disappointed, angry, frustrated, and frankly disgusted with the Dylan Mulvaney promotion that they've stopped buying all Anheuser-Busch products. So come next week, Brandon Whitworth, CEO of Anheuser-Busch, needs to address the results they had in the second quarter of 2023, and that's going to show damage to their sales. There's no question about it, as well as damage to their profitability. So this recent announcement of getting rid of some 380 or so employees is supposed to help the CEO to keep his job. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you. I'm trying to get to 30,000 subscribers, so if you can subscribe, please do subscribe. Back in this article in Fortune, June 28th, 2023, Brendan Whitworth kind of laid out, hey, look, I'm going to need to lay off a lot of people if you don't just start buying my beer again. And this was kind of his warning to the public, which I found very sketchy at the time. Bud Light boycotters decimating sales over Dylan Mulvaney promotion should think about employees and Heiser Bush CEO Brendan Whitworth says. So he did this interview in Fortune where basically he tried to blame the consumers for not wanting to consume Bud Light, not wanting to be associated with Brendan Whitworth's Dylan Mulvaney promotion, which of course he's responsible for as CEO. And they even did some advertisements showing the people that work behind the scenes to make the beer. Of course, no one has a problem with any of the people making the beer, but a lot of the consumers do have a problem with buying a beer that's been associated and rebranded with Dylan Mulvaney. 99.9% .9 of us do not want to be associated with Dylan Mulvaney in any possible way, and guilt is not enough to sell a product to a consumer. Anheuser-Busch announced just this week from the office of Brendan Whitworth, CEO of Anheuser-Busch, that they will be laying off 2% of their US-based employees. These 2% that are being laid off are definitely part of the Bud Light boycott. Unfortunately, it's going to probably be a lot worse than just 2% because all of these people being laid off are just tied into marketing and office positions. This has nothing to do with the people that make the beer. They have some 19,000 employees. You can fire the marketing people. You can fire office people. But exactly how do you plan to address the people that make and package and ship the beer to the 500 distributors that distribute it throughout the country when you've got a cut of some 30 to 31 percent? And that's being as generous as possible with Anheuser-Busch. At some point soon, Anheuser-Busch is going to have to address the fact that they don't need at least 30% of the beer that they used to produce last year. It's going to reflect another major layoff because they haven't laid off anyone involved in the production of the beer. I don't want those people to be laid off. I want them to be able to keep their jobs. But the problem is the company has to provide something that consumers actually want. The beer brand Bud Light and all of Anheuser-Busch's brands right now are collapsing down to the people that don't care about social media, they don't care about the recent marketing, they're willing to continue to buy the beer that they've always bought before, and that's fine, but it's a smaller market than it used to be, and unfortunately, realistically, that's going to result in probably anywhere from two to 3,000 people being laid off come October or so of this year. There is a finance expert who did an interview on Fox News who said that he thinks that the layoffs are related to getting rid of the woke people that caused this problem in the first place. I'm a little bit skeptical of that because it looks like these layoffs are sort of evenly distributed. And if they were going to do that, wouldn't they just make a public announcement where they would finally apologize for the transgender Dylan Mulvaney promotion? Perhaps this guy does know what he's talking about. 
Let's get into this article from Fox News. Bud Light layoffs are a push to clean up the corporate mess and move away from progressive politics. One expert said the corporate layoffs were meant to take out those who created the problem. The person who seems most responsible for creating this problem is the CEO, Brendan Whitworth, who created an environment where Alyssa Heinersheed could come in as a vice president in charge of Bud Light, push this promotion that would change Bud Light from its previous identity into a new branded identity, and her boss, Daniel Blake, who also seems to have agreed with Alyssa Heinersheed's choice to select and hire Dylan Mulvaney to change the brand of what Bud Light represents. Brewing Company Anheuser-Busch announced they will lay off hundreds of employees across its U.S. corporate staff, and experts say the news further indicates that Americans are fed up with companies like Bud Light involving themselves in politics. Quote, I think the pendulum has finally swung to the end, Oxygen Financial CEO Ted Jenkin told Fox News Digital. Consumers are starting to say, look, we love the products and services many companies sell us. We just don't want any agenda to force down our throats, and we definitely don't want anything political forced down our throats. And if you do, we're going to exercise our free speech to vote with our feet, and that means not buy your product, he added. Anson Fredericks, who's a former president of distribution for Anheuser-Busch, has been routinely and consistently criticizing the current management of Anheuser-Busch, and he has explained that come September, which is very soon from now, it's just basically five weeks away, Anheuser-Busch will get revised orders from all of their customers. They have 500 or so independent distributors that together represent their off-premise sales, which are sales to convenience stores and grocery stores for physical bottles and cans of Bud Light beer. And when those sales come in, they will reflect what sold during the previous sales period, which is going to result in reduced shelf space for all of the Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch brands. When that reduced shelf space is in, unfortunately, they're not going to be able to maintain the production levels that they had in the past. Quote, today we took a very different but necessary decision to eliminate a number of positions across our corporate organization. Anheuser-Busch CEO Brendan Whitworth said in a statement on Wednesday, while we never take these decisions lightly, we want to ensure that our organization continues to be set for future long-term success, he added. An Anheuser-Busch spokesperson later revealed that the layoffs would simplify and reduce layers within its organization and will not impact brewery and warehouse staff, drivers, and field sales, among others. Jenkins said the corporate speak of simplify and reduce layers can be translated to clean up the corporate mess, make the shareholders happy, and increase the stock price. Let's understand something. When you reduce overhead, you typically will be able to improve profits. It may be the case. The problem is, if you get rid of 400 people, let's say, we're each paid anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000 each, it's still only a reduction of something like twenty-five to $35 million a year. They've lost billions of dollars in sales of just Bud Light. This isn't going to fix whatever the reduction in sales is of Bud Light. It's an absolute minimum of 30%, 31% of volume reduced. That's a lot of money. It is probably in the billions. We'll see when the results are reported on August 3rd for their second quarter, which will include the boycott period. At least to try to make it look like the CEO is aware that they need to make changes, he fires all of these people and can reduce their overhead expense by something like 25 to $35 million. Quote, the stock is down 12% over the last three months and it's down $16 billion in market capitalization and the corporation needs to clean it up so they can try to fix the stock price for their shareholders, he said. What's the easiest way to do that? make the heads roll of the people who created the problem. The issue though is really these are people in their St. Louis, Los Angeles, and New York offices. It's not like the issue of why they have woke marketing was evenly distributed across these offices. It looks more to me like something where they can say, hey, look, we're reducing our expenses. We think we'll still be profitable, but they're not sincerely addressing the problem with branding over Dylan Mulvaney and the ridiculous idea that they could change Bud Light 
to be something that would fit the progressive agenda and somehow that would improve sales and profitability, which is the argument that they're stuck having to make at the next quarterly report and we'll see exactly what they say. According to a letter sent to employees, laid off staff will receive severance pay, six months of continued company paid health insurance benefits, and resources to help find a new job. The controversy embroiling Anheuser-Busch over Bud Light's short-lived partnership with transgender activist Dylan Mulvaney has sent shockwaves through the company and the beer-making industry. The R-Dog Group, a global glass producer who contracts with Anheuser-Busch, recently announced that it will be closing its plants in North Carolina and Louisiana, putting roughly 645 employees out of a job. The bottling company did not reveal the reason for the move, but an investigation by WRAL reportedly found that the plants are shuttering because of tanking Bud Light sales. If no one's buying Bud Light, then you're in trouble if you're a glass company trying to provide glass bottles to Bud Light. Data from Evercore ISI shows that the 12-week period ending to July 2nd Bud Light's sales volume fell by 27.1% over that time frame, which includes much of the aftermath following Dylan Mulvaney's partnership with Bud Light. Will Hill, the executive director of Consumers Research, noted that customers are now seeing firsthand how much power they have to control the market and make their voices heard. Quote, these massive companies who are forcing a progressive agenda on the American people need to realize that while asset management firms like BlackRock who own significant shares of their businesses, may want them to go far left, consumers are sick of the politics. Bud Light is a cautionary tale for any company putting politics ahead of consumers. There are consequences and you're nothing without your customers. Jenkins said Chick-fil-A is an excellent example of a company that holds to its own values and ideologies without attempting to push them on the consumer. Quote, they're always closed on Sunday everywhere in the United States, but they never tell somebody to go to church, right? They just make great chicken, he said. And when a company starts telling you about how you should think and how you should feel and how you should act, people are going to say, I just won't buy your product. And that's what's happening here across America. The Bud Light family of products, which includes beer and seltzer that shares its name, was down 28.5% in terms of collective sales volume over that period. Meanwhile, Budweiser sales volume dipped by 13.5% and Bush Lights declined by 9.8% over the same period. The fallout from the Bud Light controversy has spilled over into other Anheuser-Busch InBev beers, which have also suffered from sales declines. In May, Bud Light informed its wholesalers it would buy back unsold beer once it expires to curb losses. And that's not normally something they do. Normally, they just sell the beer one way. They don't take it back if it's unsold. That same month, Bud Light was dethroned as America's top-selling beer by Modelo Especial, a competing brand. According to a new YouGov survey, Bud Light has also dropped from the ninth most popular beer last year to its current spot at 14. Bud Light recently announced that it's setting out to have the brand's biggest summer campaign ever, with the easy to drink and easy to enjoy campaign. The campaign is featuring commercials centering around the everyday trials and tribulations of summer and a summer music tour with hopes of reshaping the company's image. But of course it's not working because anything that Bud Light does, any of their ads, any of their posts on Twitter is always mocked horrendously. Nobody wants to support Bud Light. Nothing that Bud Light is doing seems sincere. It doesn't have that vibe about it because they haven't apologized or talked honestly about the ridiculous Dylan Mulvaney promotion, which would require you to be attracted to Dylan Mulvaney before you would want to drink Bud Light beer. Very few of us are attracted to Dylan Mulvaney and as such don't want to have anything to do with the Bud Light beer or anything related to Anheuser-Busch brands. As a result, their sales are tanking now they're laying off marketing and administrative people, but very soon, unfortunately, they're going to have to lay off the people that actually make the beer because they're making a lot less beer. They can't just keep making beer and destroying it. At some point, if the beer doesn't sell after the sales reports come in and the shelf space has been reduced in September, they're going to have to deal with not having a viable business to employ as many people as they currently employ. They currently employ some 19,000 people, and it looks like they're going to have to make some additional layoffs to deal with the reduced demand they have for their products. Let me know what you think.
in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.